Okay, so hopefully I am live. Uh, and Lily, send me a note if I'm live. I'm in the American Pancreatic Association, but I just flew in from the East Coast, so my room's not ready, so in the lobby. And it was very quiet in the lobby until, of course, now that I want to give this lecture, it's not so quiet, but I'll do the best I can. And hopefully the microphones are good. Anyway, it's, it's the... Um, November, it's pancreatic cancer month. So let me show you some cases, not all pancreatic cancer, but here's just a good example, weight loss. You can see a mass in the body of pancreas. And I want to emphasize that this patient has a perfusion change in the liver, but also in addition to the pancreatic mass, has liver metastasis. Liver metastasis can be small. The reason this is a mass and not a cyst is borders are poor, and also on arterial phase imaging, you see some increased enhancement around the lesion, which you would not see if it was a cyst. So unfortunately for this patient, the patient has multiple liver metastasis, which would make the patient unresectable. You can see a few of the other 3D images. You can see the cinematic showing you the pancreatic mass, some of the collateral vessels because of the splenic vein involvement, but again, also the liver mat. So, we're dealing with a case of pancreatic cancer with liver metastasis. It's very important when you stage pancreatic cancer to look carefully at the liver. Obviously, we look at vessel involvement, but look at the liver. Make sure you're not missing any liver mets. Another case, weight loss. If you look, there's a dilated pancreatic duct and a subtle mass in the head of the pancreas on the arterial phase imaging. As you go to venous phase, you can see the mass a bit better. And you can see the dilated pancreatic duct. There's the mass again. You can see the mass does involve the GDA, but the GDA will be resected in a Whipple's procedure. There are a few small nodes nearby as well. So we have a pancreatic cancer with GDA involvement, but the patient would still be resectable. Those nodes are not going to have an impact. Again, the MIP imaging very nicely showing you the vessel involvement. You can see the dilated common duct as well as dilated pancreatic duct, all very nicely shown in this example as I roll through the images. And again, here's the cinematic rendering showing you the pancreatic mass. Of course, now they've decided to vacuum the floors, but whatever. <laughs> There's the cinematic very nicely showing you GDA involvement showing you the celiac and SMA and hepatic all looking good. So again, staging is one of the important things we do after lesion detection. It's all about staging and working carefully with your medical and surgical oncologist, which is what I'll be speaking about tomorrow. Mainly about AI tomorrow, actually. Okay, pancreatic adenocarcinoma with GDA involvement, but the patient was resectable. An incidental finding, mass and tail of pancreas. At first glance, you say the mass is vascular, must be a neuroendocrine tumor. That's what I would say as well. There's no dilated duct. It's solid. Maybe it's not super hypervascular, but it's pretty vascular. Here it is on the coronal views as well as on the 3D views. Very, very nicely shown. There are some cystic spaces in the lesion as well, which you can see here pretty nicely. Again, the vascularity of the lesion. And then we see it with cinematic rendering. Really nicely shown, solid mass. Good example of first glance, neuroendocrine tumor. But this was a solid serous cyst adenoma makes up a small percent of serous adenomas. Serous cyst adenomas obviously can be very confusing. In all honesty, I thought this was a neuroendocrine tumor. But again, you gotta think of that possibility. And of course, the pathologist can make the diagnosis when they biopsy the lesion. Really great case. Now here's a more typical neuroendocrine tumor. One centimeter lesion, hypervascular, head of pancreas, Nothing very tricky. The lesion is very vascular. Not much else. Metastatic renal cell carcinoma, perhaps, but the kidneys are present. You can see the feeding vessel. 
really classic for a neuroendocrine tumor. This case also shows nicely when neuroendocrine tumors wash out on the venous phase imaging. They still may be a bit vascular, but not as vascular as they are on the arterial phase image. So a really nice example there. And here it is on the cinematic rendering, really nice visualization of the patient's lesion. And again, a really good visualization of the tiny vascular lesions off the GDA going directly to the tumor. Great case. Another incidental finding, mass tail of pancreas. It's kind of cystic. You would go through a differential diagnosis. When you get more images, it looks more cystic, septated, got to favor a serous cyst adenoma. You have to consider in the right age group, a spent tumor, maybe even a mucinous cystic neoplasm. The more you look on the additional images, particularly when you get to venous, the multiple cystic changes really push you to a large serous cyst adenoma. That punctate calcification also can prove very valuable in making the diagnosis. Interestingly, this patient was not operated on, and here it is about six years later, the lesion continues to grow. Now, serous cyst adenomas will continue to grow. They're benign lesions, but can cause mass effect the main reason they're operated on earlier is when they get large enough, they may not be resectable. Now, just to show you also, serous cyst adenomas are not pet ab. It's a very nice case. Now, here's another one. Again, large, it was the same case. Large cystic lesion, the septations, cystic spaces, serous cyst adenoma. Another patient, abdominal pain, vascular lesion, kind of looks like the serous in terms of vascularity, but the calcifications, which you can see in serous, push you more toward a neuroendocrine tumor. Yes, serous cyst adenomas usually have little dots of calcification. This is coarse calcification, and this is a neuroendocrine tumor with coarse calcifications, very nicely shown. You can see a washout on venous phase. You can see it on the cinematic really nicely shown with the vascular involvement. Okay, there it is, the lobulations, the tumor, the pancreatic head, the prominent vascularity, all the findings that you will see in this case. You can see the mass pushes against the uh, patient's portal vein and SMV, but no invasion is seen in this patient with a well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor. Another patient abdominal pain cystic lesion, well-defined. You can go through a differential from a carcinoma even to a serous cyst adenoma. This patient was a teenager and therefore the most likely diagnosis is a SPEN tumor. SPENs can have high density centrally, typically a well-defined, very nicely shown in this case. This eventually was resected. You can see it on the cinematic, very nicely shown. And then it recurred a couple of years later. Look how much larger this mass is, has some calcifications. 90% of, of uh, spent tumors resected, are cured, 10% act aggressive. And I guess this was one of those cases, but just a really, really impressive example of a spent tumor. Just some more views of that. Another case, abdominal pain. Large mass, and this is kind of cool. First of all, you can't tell, is this adrenal, is this stomach, like a gist? Very vascular central necrosis. So you would think about the other possibilities, adrenal, stomach, retroperitoneal, but I'll tell you, this was pancreas, pushing the kidney down and medial. Tumor is very necrotic, lots of collaterals, very invasive. So what do we think about? Now you would think about an aggressive neuroendocrine tumor. You could think about an unusual type cystic tumor. You could think of a spent tumor if the patient's young enough. You could think about vascular metastasis, but it's very, very aggressive with that necrosis. You gotta be thinking malignancy. This was an unusual case. Although this patient's in their 40s, this ended up being a pancreatic blastoma. Now, pancreatic blastomas are usually under age 10, but 
things happen, they occasionally occur in adults. And of course, that was not my prime diagnosis, but on pathology, that was the only diagnosis. So again, if you're thinking large cystic necrotic, hypervascular tumors, even in an older patient, the 40s is hardly older, it's older than 30, I guess, you gotta think about a pancreatic coplastoma, which in this case, again, looked like an extra pancreatic mass, maybe even a just tumor. Here are some of the comments, under age eight, aggressive, large, and this article by Hussein, they can occur in adults. So indeed it is possible, just something, we've seen a couple, I don't know if you've seen a couple, but if you have, send them to me, we'll put them together in a series. And my friends, that's it, Pancreatic Cancer Month, organizations are supporting, like Les Garden, supporting research in pancreatic cancer. Our goal is to find a cure for pancreatic cancer or make it into a chronic disease. And with that, I hope everybody is doing well and have a great day.